are so many commentaries on the Bhagavad Gita. Some tell you to just surrender to God, have devotion, bhakti. Others tell you to do actions and some prefer knowledge, jnana. And some even argue for a, a combination of jnana and kriya. And for practitioners, for readers, for lay person, what is the correct path? How to know which one is to follow? This is a real question and I really don't think that I have a final say on this matter. All I can say is that let you have to let the text speak for yourself. You have to read the original text, if possible in Sanskrit, if not, in such translations that are not dogmatically trying to convince you to any particular uh, stream of thought. Just a literal translation of the book. And this will allow you to first of all have a sincere surrender to the words of Krishna without any mediation, without my mediation, without the mediation of Acharyas teaching Dvaita or Advaita or any other philosophy. But what do I have to say on this matter? If I were to have my own perspective, even if that's an imposition, but I cannot say that I don't have my own reading on the Bhagavad Gita. I do believe that this is not teaching some form of dualism. And this is not teaching a total surrender only. This is not teaching only realization and negation of all karmas. And all these matha, all these opinions have dragged us to some extreme. And the, the project should be, number one, to read the text as it is, and number two, to read at least some central commentaries, that of Shankaracharya, of Ramanuja Acharya, of Abhinava Gupta Acharya, for example. And then this will help you go closer to the core issues of debate and then you will also see if there are any discrepancies in those interpretations. So if the Bhagavad Gita were to say decisively that the whole project is just surrender to God and have devotion, then um, you got the message already. And why would you even want to waste uh, uh, reading any further? Just go and surrender to God and do whatever prayers and job done. The same thing could be applied to karma, actions. So then um, just go and do your actions. Why are you wasting your time reading the book? Because uh, uh, reading will lead you to realization. So if the book is not about jnana, you know, every book is dedicated to give jnana. You cannot remove the centrality of jnana, centrality of knowledge to be derived from any shastras because all shastras can do is give you some form of knowledge. And if you think knowledge is not what the text is conveying, then that's already a, a, a problematic. But let's go further deeper. When Jnana is said, when Shankara advocates for Jnana, he also goes to the extreme in saying Sarva Karma Sannyasa, a total renunciation of all actions. And those actions involve devotional actions, those actions involve meditative actions. It is not just the action of uh, burning wood and uh, offering some uh, uh, food to the gods. And if ultimately the total negation of action is what is meant by the Bhagavad Gita, you are reading it 
based on what appears to be the message in one chapter and why so many different approaches taught in the Bhagavad Gita. Why in some chapters there is primacy of karma, in other chapters there is primacy of bhakti, in some chapters there is primacy of jnana. Why is there such a discrepancy in the message itself? So if some form of reconciliation among these different practices were not to be sought in the very premise of the book, the Bhagavad Gita, then teaching different positions would only be confusing. Arjuna also says, Buddhim Moha Yeshiva Me, it looks like you are trying to confuse me. And then uh, there is a response, you know, uh, you have to follow this. The closer we read, the closer we get to realize that uh, uh, the text is not asking you to uh, uh, reject all karmas in the uh, dogmatic sense, but rather to do your duty. Uh, that is why Karishe Vachanam Tava, at the end it makes sense that I will follow what you say and I will act accordingly. But this action is not a blind action of a command, like in the chain of command in the military order, like uh, there is an order and the, the people, the generals and down the line, people follow whatever has been the command of the commander-in-chief. This is not the command like that, that you have to do it. Because what is the point of arguing in every single chapter if this is a military command? So realization is again at the core of the message. And it seems that you can actually bind together uh, action and realization. So why is there a diametrical difference and opposition uh, portrayed between action and realization? It's because Shankara viewed that uh, all the actions do not reflect the nature of the Brahman because the Brahman, in his opinion, is nishkriya, motionless, actionless, and yourself, your true uh, nature is again actionless, motionless. But that is the point I disagree with. I agree with many things Shankara has said, but that particular point I disagree with because if the Absolute were to lack dynamism and were be motionless, actionless, then we are negating any form of action in the world to be real. And that is what Shankara says, that there is no action indeed. All the motions that you see is due to Maya. And, and there is no real action in the Absolute. There is no real change in the Absolute. So we do see that everyday reality the whole world, the cosmic planes in the metaphysics, in our epistemology, in our process of knowing, everything relies on action, everything relies on dynamism, and to reject this totality of our perception, totality of our knowledge, and to say there is no action at all, will be counterintuitive. Even the very process of knowing the very act of knowing does not negate the possibility of action. And also it just is not um, leading people towards any goal if the whole message, if the whole philosophy is that of non-action, then uh, we are creating a social philosophy uh, that lacks dynamism that uh, rejects any moral action because if there is no action, there is no moral action either. So then the message is a moot point. Therefore, I do believe that uh, we have to find a balance among the commentaries and at the same time, we have to learn to read critically and not miss the point, the bigger picture that there are multiple ways, multiple yoga, multiple methods taught in this single book, 
and if they could not be reconciled in the big picture then teaching one uh, uh, particular mode of yoga or another mode of yoga would be meaningless so therefore i believe that uh, uh, from the perspective of the speaker krishna or the from the perspective of the book there is this possibility of the integration and what is the primary if you ultimately say then what is the primary primary of course the any for any shastra the primary thing is knowledge they are of course trying to convey something and you have to realize that after realization after understanding the message you have to bring that understanding to your action to your daily life and we have to align your uh, daily activities accordingly therefore there is an integration of action and realization mm -hmm.